Good morning. Good to see you all. Day four on our way. Um, <clears throat> cool. So let's just start with a little review, very quick review of um, the first three days. And so we learned the definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness is paying attention to the present moment. You can do that right now just by igniting the definition on purpose, uh, non judgmentally. And then we shrunk that definition into open uh, presence, right? Open presence. And slowly, hopefully, the word openness itself will trigger uh, the experience of mindfulness, the experience of being aware, of noticing the moment you, uh, you're within. Um, and that can be a mantra, a very simple mantra, something to repeat throughout the day. Uh, and then we discuss, well, what does this open awareness or this open presence lead to? And it leads to intimacy. And yesterday we shared that intimacy is a law of reality, that there is no escape from the inundation of thought and experience and emotion. We are permanently, as long as we are alive, permanently embedded in the maelstrom, the, the storm of, of the human experience and of the living experience. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's where we are. And it can be overwhelming, but if we anchor into presence and openness, it tends to be become at least tolerable to enchanting and beautiful, something like that. And so what we're going to get into today and for the next two days, the next three days, are is a quintessential technique of mindfulness. Uh, it is very, very, very simple. Um, and that sort of falls in line with the entire spirit of mindfulness. Uh, Okay, um, so with this concept of intimacy and this idea that mindfulness is simple, I think uh, an important concept or an important aspect to discuss is maybe it's not simple. Maybe you're sitting here and I'm saying all these things or you've read these books or you're listening to a podcast or you're listening to a YouTube video and it's very, very challenging for whatever reason. And I imagine the... The reason for that difficulty is because of the presence of some form of suffering. Uh, and so the idea here is we have to acknowledge the nature of our minds and that our minds do in fact suffer. And that suffering, that, that uh, tendency to, to lean into stress, to ruminate on ruminate on problems that may or may not even exist ruminate on problems that have already passed is a survival mechanism and so when we understand the the cause the origin of our tendency to uh, think negatively I think it normalizes it uh, you just want to think uh, it is better it is more proactive it is more beneficial and adaptive to think of the problem so that if the problem does arise we are prepared a zebra looking into the safari should not trust the grass, the tall grass. The zebra should expect there is a predator there. And even if there isn't, that expectation of danger will, will sort of give that animal an edge over the, you know, the potential of its, of its demise. And so there's a really lovely story to sort of uh, bring an innocence to this negativity bias. Maybe you've heard it. Uh, it's the story of a frog and a scorpion. Both are trying to cross a river. And so the frog and the scorpion are trying to cross the river. The scorpion, right, unable to swim, the frog able to swim, the scorpion asks, frog, can you take me on your back and get me across the river? And the frog, you know, suspicious of the scorpion and its, you know, claws and stinger, you know, questions the scorpion, scorpion, you sting. Your nature is to, is to attack, to paralyze. Why should I let you on my back? And the scorpion says, well, if I sting you, we'll both sink. This is of mutual benefit. And the frog you know, understands the logic, takes the scorpion on his back, and they both start to make their way across the river. The currents become stronger and stronger and stronger. The scorpion becomes scared. It's in a precarious situation. And the scorpion all of a sudden stings the frog. The frog gets paralyzed. Both sink to the bottom of the river. As they sink, the frog asks, why, scorpion? Why did you do this? And the scorpion sorrowfully says, it wasn't my intention. It was my instinct. 
my instinct to sting, my instinct to react to fear, my instinct to react to danger. And so I'm illustrating this, or you know, narrating this story to just illustrate that suffering, that fear, that anger, they aren't necessarily wrong, they're just the nature of the world. And this supports us in our mindfulness because if you're having trouble absorbing, I'm gonna let this plane pass by, Okay, so if you're having trouble absorbing and being intimate with these negative sensations, these stingers of your own mind or circumstances, uh, it's helpful just to understand it is, it is the nature of, of life. So moving forward, uh, intimacy involves sort of this, this, uh, expansive, this expansive willingness to connect to good and bad. But now mindfulness comes in and says, uh, while intimacy is a law of reality, the mindful sort of, the, the practitioner of mindfulness chooses a specific aspect to fixate on. And they tend to fixate on joy. They tend to fixate on happiness. And this is what we're getting into today. Suffering is natural, but to the mindful it is not enough. And so we orient our minds, we focus our minds on the other side of life. And what we find is there is an abundance of joy alongside an abundance of distress. And so Thich Nhat Hanh, again, in his broken and simple English, uh, really, really sort of makes the point clear that if we pay attention to the blue of the sky, if we pay attention to the coolness of the wind, if we pay attention to the, the brightness and aliveness of plants, the sweetness of fruits, the smile on a child's face, uh, we will find that we are in a garden of happiness. We are in a garden of beauty. We are in a garden of things worth being grateful for. And all we have to do is be simultaneously open to that, as well as sort of, you know, uh, recognizing the bias of our own mind. Alrighty, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to work on one of Thich Nhat Hanh's sort of quintessential techniques. We're going to breathe deeply, and as you breathe in, simply say, I am aware that I am breathing in. And as you exhale, come, uh, repeat, I am aware that I am breathing out. And while you do this, there might be this neutrality or a distraction, but every time you breathe in and every time you breathe out, you must facilitate joy. You must conjure up gratitude. You must conjure up excitement for the glory and satisfaction of a simple breath in and a simple breath out. And if you find that difficult, that's something to pay attention to. The negativity bias, the scorpion in your mind is strong. If you find that easy, continue to feed and foster that fire of joy. Okay, last little thing before we get into the exercise, uh, a really lovely quote. Uh, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. There is no way to joy. Joy is the way. And so as we breathe simply, I am aware of my breath in, I am aware of my breath out for 20 minutes, this doesn't lead to peace. Every breath is peace. So you must feel that. Okay, here we go. Let's get into this comfortable posture, eyes closed. And let's take about three minutes as always just to recognize what it is you're doing. You are suspending your day practicing something new or practicing something familiar, but either way, practicing it with the intention of embedding it into your nature. And what you are practicing is mindfulness, open presence, intimacy with life, and a capacity to recognize joy in all things.
deepen the breath slightly and notice that that brings you home, so to speak. Pulls you out of the mind into the body. And from there, contemplate gently. Open presence. And through this openness, Through this openness to all thoughts and sounds and sensations, intimacy, you are just with the world, intentionally, non-judgmentally. Again, slow down the breath, deepen the breath. The quickness and shallowness of our breath is a derivative of our mind's negativity. And while the mind leans into negativity as a survival mechanism to be prepared for the worst, Mindfulness is about remembering alongside that danger, there is so much joy, so much beauty. And so a quintessential exercise of this practice, a quintessential exercise of this practice is as you breathe in, repeat in the mind, I am aware I am breathing in. And as you exhale, I am aware I am breathing out. Among other things, I am aware I am breathing in. Among other things, I am aware I am breathing out. Now the detail, with every breath in and out, you must facilitate joy. You must facilitate peace. Be intimate with that essence. Be available to that truth. Five minutes here.
deepen the breath. Allow the mind to wander. Let it move through its instincts, just like the scorpion. But when you come back to your breath, come back to the simple mantra, the breath is there waiting for you. That joy is there waiting for you. As it always is. Slow down the breath and tether yourself to your awareness. You are aware of the breath, aware of the exercise, aware of the mind and its distraction. A being anchored in awareness, no matter what circumstance they find themselves in, is always home, home in the present home in the ever-changing reality. And so as your mind wanders, be happy for it because it is happy to wander. It is happy to think of what must be done. It is happy to think of problems. It is happy to create solutions. And it is happy to return, as it always does, to the now. Find joy in all things, clear skies and cloudy skies, bright days and rainy days. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Relax your body.
slow down the breath. As Thich Nhat Hanh says, make yourself available to joy because you and it have an appointment in the now. Oh yeah, this breath does feel good. Do all my breaths feel this good? Is this really always available to me? Yes, through presence and openness. Stay with the breath, but now actively listen to your environment. Open focus. Behold everything. The simultaneity of distraction and focus. Intrinsically pleasant experiences. Intrinsically uncomfortable experiences. All happening at once. Everything is within everything. The tree is the sun and the sky and the earth. And so while our minds have reason to fixate on problems and danger, and while that is a truth, and mindfulness is about connecting to truth, mindfulness is also about directing ourselves into beauty. To open the peripheries of our instincts into a greater vision of the world, the blue of the sky, the buzz of flapping bird wings, the laughter of a child, the sweetness of fruit, the touch of warm water, getting into bed after a long day, the sight of an old friend, A 
few more breaths. Among other things, I am aware I am breathing in. Among other things, I am aware I am breathing out. And through this joy, and through this peace, So easy, so simple. It just has to be remembered. With a breath in, open your eyes. Okay. Good work, everybody. So the very, uh, I think the, you know, the, the magnetic phrase, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. That's a good one. It's a good one to get in your head. Uh, to think about today. Uh, every step is peace. It's there. It's the joy of, you know, feeling your feet press against the floor, the joy of feeling your chest lift as you erect your posture, the joy of sound, the joy of experience, the joy of living. Again, mindfulness is objective in a certain way, right? We, they, we um, are open to the reality of life, and that's that intimacy piece. But then if we think about that tree example, inside the fragment is the whole. Inside that sorrow, there is a strange joy. Inside that problem, there is a solution. Inside that distraction, there is focus. Everything is within everything. And then the mindfulness practitioner and the, the spirit of mindfulness starts to fixate on what we tend to not fixate on instinctually, which is the positive 